In this video, I'm going to teach you how to burn an audio CD with Bizarro. To access Bizarro, go to your Applications menu, Sound and Video, and click on Bizarro. After a, a moment or two, you'll see that it loads up the actual program. And here on your right hand side is a list of recent projects uh, that I've completed. Now in this video, I'm going to only focus on an audio project. If you'd like to look at the data projects, video projects, disk copy, and burn image, I have other videos uh, on these particular topics that you can look on uh, YouTube or on the website, and there will be links to my YouTube videos. In this video, I'm going to only focus on the audio project. Let's say that you've got yourself a, a CD, and you rip the music off, and you want to and later you've discovered you scratched your uh, CD, taken it in your car, and you've got an old automobile that has a CD player, and you've scratched it. That happens from time to time. Uh, and it's almost impossible to do a disc copy because if it's not going to read it in your CD player or your CD burner or CD reader, it's probably not going to burn a good copy. Sometimes you can take things like toothpaste and polish it out. I've done that in the past, but that doesn't always work. So that's why they recommend you to at least make one good backup copy so that you have access to the uh, music that you purchase. From time to time you can purchase uh, audio files that you've downloaded from the internet and you may have an old automobile like me that has a CD in the car. It's an older 2001 Nissan uh, and I do listen to audio CDs from time to time. So let's say that I want to burn myself a new project. To do that I click on the audio project or I can go up here to project new and choose the new audio project. In this case I'm going to click the big button, the audio project, and it's going to come and say to add the files to this project click the add button and drag the files in this area. To remove the files select them and click remove button and press delete. Now when you press the delete key if the files are in this screen it's not going to delete the files off your computer. It just removes them from the software. All right, I'm going to go hit the plus button, the add button. All right, it's going to bring me into looks like my file manager. I'm going to go to my music folder. I've only have that one particular CD on the, my in my music folder. I open it and let me select the songs. Now I'm going to hit add. Now I could simply drag those into it, uh, but since I've already got this full screen, I'm going to hit add. And as you can see, it's now loaded the entire CD into my Bersario audio burning section of the program. So now all I have to do is hit burn. But before I do, there's a couple things that I want to make sure that I've completed. Uh, I need to make sure that I've added myself a title. You don't have to, but if you've got a CD player that displays the name of the album across, you may have one that scrolls across the name, this would be the time that you'd put the name of the album. Also, make sure that you've got your CD selected, you know, your drop down list, and choose your CD ROM drive. Now, I do actually have a blank CD into the CD burner. You can actually see it looks like two copies over here. I just recently burnt a CD. Uh, I guess it kept that memory when I put the other one in. I didn't give it time to erase uh, the previous one. So there's two copies of CDs. Eventually, after I eject it, they'll disappear over a period of time because I just recently used it before I started filming this video. The next thing I want to do is to make sure I do have all the songs in there and they're in the correct order, and they are. I now select the burn button and it's not going to immediately start burning. It will take me to another screen where I can select the speed. I select burn. Now for the sake of this video, I'm going to choose the maximum speed because I want you to watch, if you're a first time user, I want you to watch from beginning to end without me pausing it. Uh, because sometimes when I'm watching a video, I don't mind people that's pausing it because a lot of times I've used the software before I understand what's taking place. But if I'm a new user, sometimes if I'm using software that I've never used before and someone pauses it and when they come back, I wonder, did they do anything? So I want to go from the beginning to the end steps. So if you want the best quality, you choose the lowest speed. You scroll down and choose the lowest speed. But for this is a demonstrative video. So if it has glitches because it went too fast, I don't really care. Now, I might eventually listen to it in my car. If it doesn't have glitches, I'll keep it. And if it does have glitches, I'll throw it away because I did it for test purposes. All right, as you can see here, there's some options. It says to burn the Im image directly without saving to disk. You know, I don't really need to save it to disk because my image file or my, not the image files, but the actual music files are still there. If I wanted to make an image out of it, 
I could. But in this case, I'm not going to create myself an image file. So when it's completed, there will not be an image file left on the disk. It says leave the disk open to add to other files later. If you are in the process and you're adding songs, you could burn songs until eventually you completed and filled the disk up. Then when you did your final burn of your last song, you would uh, make sure that that's not checked. So you only check that if you want to leave it open to add songs to your CD. Now I want to tell you something about this. If you're leaving it open, you will not be able to take it out of your computer and listen to it in other devices because it hasn't been finalized. It hasn't been closed out. Now simulate before burning. That just goes through the simulation to see if it will have any problems. I'm not going to go through that because that goes through the whole process as if it was burning it to the disk but it not actually burned to the disk. It will actually go to a temporary file, a folder. That's really nothing that you have to worry about. If you would like to make yourself several copies of the disk, you pre press the several copies option. And if you didn't mean to get into this, if you was wanting to do something else, you just cancel out. In this case, I'm going to go burn, and I'm intentionally choosing the maximum speed. So take a look at how long it takes to burn 15 songs. Here we go. It's going through, and it says burning audio CD. It says starting to record. And it's before it's actually start recording, the, the light, now it started. For those of you that uh, are at home, you're probably listening to it burn louder than myself uh, because the DVD and CD burner is next to the microphone. So if it sounds loud, it's because the mic is sitting next to my CD or DVD burner on my laptop. Now it says writing your CD text information. So that's where you type in the name of the album and it's creating the names of the songs. So if you're listening to your CD, music CD, while you're riding down the road, you will see the names of your titles scroll, scroll across your screen. And you may not have the type that scrolls, it may just show up the name of the CD. Now you're writing track one. Remember there's only 15 tracks. And we're burning at a speed of about times 12. It fluctuates. So your estimated drive speed is around 12 times 12. We've completed 52 or 53 megabytes out of 503 megabytes. We're 13% completed with the burning process. Now, there's one thing I want to focus on about burning the CD. Don't get impatient. And when that thing gets to exactly 100% done, don't reach down and eject the disk. Even though it tells you it's 100% done, it's not 100% completed with the whole process. This is just telling you the percentage of how much the burning process is. When it completes the burning process, and notice there's a little icon in your system tray, and the icon changes colors to match up the percentage. As you can see, it's about 26%. The green is about 26%. And it jumps, it fluctuates. Uh, but when it's finished 100%, do not immediately eject the disk. What this does is it finalizes the disk, it closes the disk out so you can take it and put it in other computers or other CD players to listen to your music. You can put it in your automobile if you're old enough to drive or even if you're not old enough to drive, you can ride with someone and ask their permission to put it in their CD player. But what it does is it finalizes it and then it goes through the process to where it checks your data. So as you remember I told you there's two CDs up here the one that it was previously recorded, it's already disappeared because it's only working with one CD. So eventually after I eject this one out a few minutes and this one eventually will disappear as well. But after it burns 100%, let it do its thing and it will chime letting you know if it was successful. It will tell you if it was a su completed successfully. It will also let you know if there were errors. Now a lot of times we as humans we create those errors we get impatient we do things in the background we shouldn't do and so the computer tries to take away from the time it's burning and do something else and that creates a glitch which will sometimes create an error message on the burning process so anytime you're burning audios videos data or an ISO image to a DVD I recommend uh, not to do things in the background and maybe even turn your email checkers off you know, I right before I started the video, I made sure I disabled my email checker so it wouldn't chime uh, in the background 
while I'm making this video so it wouldn't hinder the burning process and so that you wouldn't hear something that sounded like a doorbell in the background. Okay, we're almost 93% completed with the burning process, not with the whole entire uh, process of creating the CD. All right, now it's finalizing. It's closing off the disk so that that way you can take the disk and put in other machines. If you were to add songs to this disk, it wouldn't finalize. You could put it in there and it would keep adding songs to the end of it. There you did. Audio successfully burned. So if I were to now take this disk out, and I'm completed with this, if I were to take this disk out, I could go to another computer, I could go to a stereo, and I could actually uh, listen to my music. I won't play the music here. I don't want any copyright violations. Uh, from listening to songs on YouTube. So if it pops up, I'll stop it. But I will show you that it does say the audio disk. And if I were to click onto it, it should show, and there's the audio files. The thing I like about Ubuntu Mate, I'll let it load the icons, is it gives you a preview of your music if you hover over it. Well, it doesn't on the disk, but if you do on the computer, if I were to go here, I can go, it gives you a little preview of your music. So it did completely successfully burn my audio CD. So again, if for example you needed to burn a CD and you couldn't remember what I did, I do have this on my website. If you scroll up to the top of the website, it goes and shows you everything from an audio to data to video to disk copy and burning an image. So you don't have to rewatch the videos to understand how to burn an audio project. I'll have the link below so that way if you'd like to print off the steps so that that way you're not bothering the burning process to worry it creates an error message. Hopefully you've learned how to use uh, Bizarro to burn your audio CDs. Hopefully you enjoy this and hopefully you are enjoying learning about Ubuntu Mate.